Track 2.25 One. This is a kind of mushroom called a white truffle. It is highly prized in cooking, and the best ones can cost over 10,000 euros per kilogram. A single white truffle was once sold for over 230,000 euros. You might think that's a lot of money to pay for a mushroom, but truffles are very rare and only grow for a couple of months each year. 2. This pen, called the Mont Blanc Lorenzo de Medici fountain pen, costs £6,850. It's made of sterling silver and is engraved by hand. 3. This pair of melons cost over 2 million yen at an auction in Japan. That's 12,000 pounds. Fruit is a popular gift in Japan to say thank you to a friend or to your boss at work. Melons need to be perfectly round and exactly the right colour. Perfect apples and strawberries are also popular gifts. But these Yubari King melons are the most expensive. 4. These are Nike trainers dipped in real gold. They were created by the designer Just Another Rich Kid. He created five pairs of these Nike Air Dunks for $5,400 each. The New York-based artist, real name Ken Courtney, created the glitzy shoes as part of a collection called Indulgences for the man who has everything. 5. How much do you usually pay for a haircut? If you're in New York City and want Orlando Peter to do it, you'll need to pay about $800. Is it worth it? Well, ask Madonna or Gwyneth Paltrow or Anne Hathaway. They all go to Orlando Peter when they need a haircut. Track 2.26 1. You can buy white truffles at a deli. 2. You can buy a pen at a stationer's. 3. You can buy melons at a greengrocer's. 4. You can buy trainers at a shoe shop. 5. You can get a haircut at a hairdresser's. Track 2.27 Bakers Bank Butchers Charity shop Chemists Coffee shop Clothes shop Cosmetics store Deli Delicatessen DIY store Estate agents Florists, garden centre, greengrocers, hairdressers, jewellers, laundrette, news agents, opticians, post office, shoe shop, stationers, takeaway. Track 2.28 One. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I'd like to buy two litres of white paint, please. Oh, and some paintbrushes. Sure. Uh, can I use this coupon? Oh, I'm not sure. Can I see it? Oh, I'm sorry, it's too old. Oh, really? Yes, look at this date. Used before the 31st of August 2009. Wow, I've had that a long time. Hmm. Two. Hi, I'm looking for a magazine. It's called Great Train Journeys. Have you got it? Sure. How much is it? It's £1.95. Really? That's very cheap. Yes, it's on special offer this month. The normal price is £6.95. Oh, OK. Three. Hello, can I help you? Yes. 
How much are these jeans, please? Oh, I'm not sure. Is there a price tag? I can't see one. It's usually here near the top. Yes, there it is. Uh, eighty-five pounds. <laughs> Sorry, they're far too expensive for me. Well, we've got some cheaper pairs over there. Thanks. Four. Can I help you? Yes, I'm interested in the diamond ring that's in your window. The one with the large diamond in the centre. Yes, that's right. I is it two thousand five hundred pounds? Yes, it's a bargain, isn't it?、Mm, I don't know.、Uh, that seems rather expensive. I realise it's a lot of money, but believe me, it's a big diamond for that price. Track two point twenty nine. What are you doing? I'm doing my geography project. Look at this photo. It's shocking that some people have so much and others have so little. The world would be much better if money didn't exist. What do you mean? If money didn't exist, how would you buy things? If you needed something, you would make it. If you couldn't make it, you would swap with somebody else. So, if I wanted a new mobile phone, how would I get it? <laughs> you don't need things like that. I'm talking about essentials, food, clothes, that kind of thing. At the moment, millions of people haven't even got those. If money didn't exist, life wouldn't be better for poor people. No, I think it would. If nobody had any money, everybody would be equal. Track two point thirty. Glenn James didn't expect to get a reward for what he did. He thought he was just doing the right thing, but because of his honesty, this poor homeless man from Boston now has enough money to live comfortably. Last February, James, who has been homeless for five years, was in a shopping centre when he noticed a bag on the floor. Nobody was near it. He picked it up. And looked inside. He couldn't believe his eyes. There was forty-two thousand dollars in cash and traveler's checks in the bag. James didn't think for one moment of keeping the money. He left the shopping center and stopped a police car that was passing and handed the bag to them. The bag also contained passports and tickets, and the police soon found the owner of the bag, a Chinese student who was visiting Boston. When Ethan Whittington, a manager at an advertising agency, heard the story on the news, he decided to help James. He wanted to make life better for him. Twenty-six-year-old Whittington set up a website where people could donate money to James. He hoped to raise fifty thousand dollars, but soon there was over one hundred thousand dollars. James is surprised and delighted at receiving the money. I was only doing the right thing," he says. "Now I'll have enough money to open a bank account." Track two point thirty one. One. Last week, I was looking for a present for my friend Amy. She's quite fussy, but I found a nice scarf in a clothes store. I was about to pay for it when I noticed a ten-pound note on the floor. I handed it to the shop assistant, and she said she'd keep it in case anyone came back for it. Two. I bought a baseball cap yesterday, but as I was leaving the shop, I noticed that the shop assistant had overcharged me. I was paying by card, and I didn't check the amount before I entered my pin. It said ten pounds on the price ticket, but she charged me fifteen pounds. I complained, but it didn't help. She said, "You can have all the money back, but I can't sell it to you for ten pounds." I bought it anyway, but I'm glad I did. It's a really cool cap. Three. It's always a mistake to buy things in a sale. I always ask myself, "Would you buy it if it was full price?" If the answer is no, probably not. Then I don't buy it. There's a lovely leather jacket that I want. But it costs so much. I only get six pounds a week from my parents, so it'll be a while before I can afford it. 
I'm sure Dad would lend me the money if I asked him, but I'd rather not. 4. Last month I borrowed some money from my parents to buy a necklace. I fell in love with it, although it was expensive. My mum tried to persuade me not to spend so much, but I bought it anyway. A week later, I decided I didn't like it after all, so I decided to return it to the shop. But I couldn't find the receipt, so I couldn't exchange it or get a refund. I've wasted a lot of money, and I owe my mum £60. Pounds. Track 2.32 Box Clever Aaron Levy loves tin spaghetti. He lives in a small apartment. At the age of 27, his biggest luxury is his smartphone. If you met him, you probably wouldn't realise that he is a multi-millionaire. However, as co-founder and CEO of Box, a successful IT company, he is worth about $100 million. He loves his job and works hard. Most days, he does not leave the office until after midnight. Levy and his friend Dylan Smith started Box in 2005 while still at university. It offered a better way of storing data, cloud storage. Like most new businesses, Box did not bring in much income at the start. When it began, Levy and Smith looked for funding, but couldn't find any investors. Back in 2005, cloud storage was quite a new idea. For that reason, nobody wanted to risk lending them money. Eventually, a well-known entrepreneur called Mark Cuban agreed to put money into Box. Soon, Box grew quickly and had contracts with many of the biggest companies in the USA. Now, Box has grown a lot, and so have its profits, making Levy a multi-millionaire. Most people his age would lead an extravagant lifestyle if they had so much money. But Levy says that it doesn't interest him. I'm certainly not into money. He only goes to expensive restaurants if an important customer wants to eat there. Otherwise, he has lunch meetings in burger bars. And I still like tin spaghetti. I'd be happy if I had it every day. Track 2.33 I'd like to start by saying that I don't believe schools spend enough money on any of these things. The reason I say that is that very few students in our school play musical instruments. And not many do sport either, except PE, which is a lesson. Not only that, we hardly ever go on school trips, perhaps just once a year. Now, let's move on to the question of which of the three schools should spend the most money on. If I have to choose just one, I'd say that we should spend the most on music. I'll tell you why I think that. First, there are lots of opportunities for students to do sport outside school. In my town, for example, there's a sports centre where we can swim, go to the gym, play squash, basketball, football and so on. Second, students often go on trips and holidays with their parents, so there's no need for the school to spend money on school trips. Finally, and most importantly, very few people have musical instruments at home, and not many parents play musical instruments themselves. So... Without encouragement and help from the school, most students will miss out on music. To sum up, I believe that schools should spend money on all these things, but music is the most important. Track 2.34 The World Bank is an international financial organisation founded in 1944 at the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. It is closely connected to the United Nations and its headquarters are located in Washington, D.C. The bank currently has over 9,000 employees working in more than 100 representative offices worldwide. It is made up of two institutions, International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, IBRD, and International Development Association, 
IDA. Each has its own role in improving the living standards of people in low-income countries. As a member, Vietnam has a strong relationship with the World Bank. Most projects and programs funded by the World Bank for Vietnam have focused mainly on areas such as agriculture, energy, transport, health, education, banking and finance. These programs and projects have effectively contributed to Vietnam's development. Track 2.35 In an effort to help Vietnam's development, the World Bank has paid special attention to improving education through a lot of projects. In 2011, for example, Vietnam welcomed a project worth 3 million US dollars for the education of deaf children. A year later, $84.6 million was spent on a project named Global Partnership for Education, Vietnam Escuela Nueva Project. Its aim was to introduce new teaching and learning methods to primary students in the most disadvantaged areas. In 2013, the Higher Education Development Policy Programme was approved, a project to improve education in post-secondary institutions, which received $50 million. Two years later, the World Bank continued its support through another project called Renovation of General Education Project, which aimed to make changes to the curriculum and improve student learning outcomes. Its total spending on this project was $77 million. These are just a few of many ongoing education projects supported by the World Bank in Vietnam. Track 2.36 1. Hello and welcome to George Lewis. I'd like to remind you all that this week is sales week in our shop. You will find plenty of bargains on every floor. There is 50% off many items in ladies' and men's fashion and also children's clothing. You can save 20% on digital cameras and some mobile phones too. And don't forget to visit our cafe for our offer of the week menu. One child goes free with each paying adult. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy shopping here at George Lewis. 2. Hi Lucy. Katie told me you're going to South America next year. Yeah, that's right. I want to take a gap year and travel around. And work a bit too. I'd love to do that, but I haven't got any money. You need to save up. But that's really hard. How do you do it? Do you stay at home all the time? No, you don't need to do that. But I work in the holidays and sometimes at weekends. I don't buy many clothes or CDs anymore either. I still go out, but not every night. Maybe I need to get a job then. I think that's a good idea. 3. Hey Jake, are you still looking for a job? No, I found something in town, in that new clothes shop that opened on the high street last month. My brother's still looking though. Oh, right. Well, you can tell him I saw an advert in the restaurant near my house for part-time waiters. That sounds good. Is it evenings or lunch times? I don't know. I've got the number. Do you want to give it to him? OK, thanks. I'll put it in my phone.